Hi everyone, I'm Isha, and I love to eat meat. For me, meat is precious because it's the main feature. It defines my meals. But it's also precious because a lot of time and resources go into it. I mean, it's undeniable that raising an animal to slaughter, it impacts the environment a lot more than growing a vegetable to harvest. But like many meat eaters, I hardly thought about that. And when I did, I didn't want to. Even though I self-identify as someone who cares about the environment, who is concerned about sustainability, I didn't want to acknowledge the impact of producing meat and eating meat. For the most part, it was pretty easy to ignore. But when my love for meat had me focusing on meat science, I came face to face with the impact of eating meat. I saw the numbers. So I'm going to show you the numbers right now. So to produce just a single eight ounce steak, and I don't mean the entire cow, just that single eight ounce steak, required 1.6 kilograms of feed to be consumed. That's like 18 ears of corn. And the amount of energy that went into producing that single steak could fully power your laptop 60 times. And in the production of that single eight ounce steak, the equivalent of four and a half kilograms of carbon dioxide was released into the air as various greenhouse gases. That's the amount of greenhouse gas that's released from burning about two liters of gasoline, or enough to take me from here all the way to the airport, 25 kilometers away in my old Honda Civic. Plus, I think the most jarring statistic is that that steak required 3,515 liters of water. If you drank the amount of water you're supposed to drink every single day, this is the amount of water the average person would drink in five years. When we go to the store and we pick up that eight ounce steak and see that it costs us $3.48 for us to purchase, how would we ever be able to infer how much it costs to the environment? What if um, we thought about ways in which we could more sustainably eat meat? Well, in order to do that, we need to know how, what contributes the environmental impact of meat. So here I'm going to show you the impact in terms of metric tons of carbon dioxide released per household per year for red meat and chicken, fish, and eggs. And so we can see, yes, red meat actually has quite a high impact. But let's break it down a little bit. When we actually look at what contributes to that impact, we can see that travel and transportation makes this really small part of it. And the larger part of the problem is actually the impact of production, the actual impact from raising animals all the way from birth to slaughter. When we think about buying meat sustainably, eating meat sustainably, we usually think about buying local. But that really only addresses this small part of the problem. How can we address this larger part of the problem, the actual impact of production? Well, what if, instead of growing an entire animal, we grew just the meat by multiplying muscle cells in vitro? We wouldn't have to waste resources growing ears, tails, horns, hide, things we don't eat. And we'd produce far fewer waste products, like greenhouse gases. So it seems like a pretty intriguing idea. But of course, getting people to want to try a meat produced in a lab is about as easy as getting them to try natural sustainability solutions like totally going vegetarian or eating insects. It just seems too drastic for most of us. We, when we think about ways to eat sustainably, we get a lot of advice from all sides. And some of these suggestions and advice, they ask a lot from us. They ask us to change our diet. Some of these suggestions don't ask too much, but what these suggestions all forget is that we generally make our food choices meal to meal. I think many of us would like to make environmentally considerate food choices, but on a sliding scale, on our own terms. And in order to do that, we need to know how to make those choices. We need to see some data. So here I'm going to show you some data, and it is the impact of different kinds of meats that we eat. And it's on a percentage scale compared to beef, because beef is the highest impact of most of the meats that we eat in terms of energy use, greenhouse gas emissions, land and water use. So it's 100% all across because we're comparing to beef. 
And what we can see is second to beef is sheep, and next to sheep is pork, and following pork is poultry. Now, what do you think an estimate for in vitro meat would look like? It would look a little bit like this. So while, while an in vitro meat would require more energy to produce than poultry, it would produce far fewer greenhouse gases and require much less land and water. If you were at the store and you had access to this kind of information, how would it affect the meat that you buy? What if you were at the store and you picked up a package of chicken or picked up a package of in vitro meat, and on it you saw this, an environmental impact label in quantified terms that you could relate to. For those of us who would like to make an environmentally considerate choice, this actually empowers us to do so and do it on our own terms. Even if that choice means trying in vitro meat once, or choosing chicken over beef, or going vegetarian one night, every single one of those choices contributes to our population eating more sustainably. Think about how the nutrition facts label affects the way you eat. For those of us who were interested in our nutrition, it enabled us to make a choice that was right for us. Sometimes that meant eating something that was a little bit healthier. Sometimes that meant informed consent about something that was unhealthy. But at least we knew. See, the nutrition label really stands out because there's so many stickers and seals out there that are supposed to tell us how to eat healthy. But the nutrition facts label is constant and quantified. And even though there's some criticism about how those quantities are determined, it's still a tool that we have now to guide our choices. Plus, it's a tool that's still evolving. The Nutrition Facts label only became mandatory for prepackaged foods in Canada in 2007, so we still have a ways to go. And in fact, for the very first time as of this year in the States, you'll see the Nutrition Facts label on packages of meat. Unfortunately, right now, this is what the landscape of labels, stickers, and seals are that are supposed to tell us how to eat sustainably and responsibly. The problem is, they separate us from the data. It's not enough to tell us what to eat. We want to know why and how. Show us the numbers. Consumers are more educated than ever before. Showing us the numbers won't frighten us. It'll enable us. So in closing, meat is a food product with an extremely high environmental impact. And changing the way we eat meat is probably the most significant and urgent step we need to take towards eating more sustainably. But eating sustainably doesn't necessarily mean committing to veganism or vegetarianism or hard and fast rules about what we can and cannot eat. We can all make environmentally considerate food choices on a sliding scale, on our own terms, one meal at a time. With upfront impact information about our food, we can make those choices. And together, all those little choices will make a big difference. Thank you. <laughs>